Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to create an animated GIF. The GIF file format allows animation through several frames with the set timing between them. Affinity Designer does not support the animated GIF format, so I will be creating a sequence of PNG files and run them through a GIF converter. Let's start by setting up the document. This one has 900 by 900 pixels in 72 dpi as we're working for the screen not for print. I make it RGB and set the background to transparent. I add an artboard as a container to hold the frames. I start out with the rectangle for the background. I want to curve the corners and give it a nice blue tint. You can leave the background transparent if it matches your design. In this case, I want to bring in a fish from an earlier tutorial. I'll just paste it in here and not go through the process of creating the fish, because that is not what this tutorial is about. I'm also pasting some hearts and bubbles I created earlier. Simply copy and paste those over. It is just the heart shape and a circle, and I put a gradient mask on top to have them fade towards the top. Let's create some waves now. That's a nice part to explain because one of the nice features I really like and that gets often overlooked is the alignment tool. I make a straight line, give it a stroke that is thick enough to show and then go in with the note tool and add a few more notes. In this case, I just add a bunch, no matter where I place them, and then use the alignment tool, and it works not just on shapes, but on nodes as well. So now my nodes are evenly aligned. I convert them all to smooth and lift up every second node. Duplicate this wavy line and create the background pattern by duplicating and moving, and the power duplicate will do the rest. I lower the opacity and then turn the background into a symbol for easier alterations should I decide to change the color or the design and to be able to turn it on and off easily. The last element I'm going to add is a bit of text. That way I can show various parts of animation in one clip. The text will just be getting bigger and smaller, so a little bit of scaling, maybe a little bit of movement, while the fish will have a flipping of the fins and the heart and bubbles will move upwards. So we have three slightly different parts that will be moved. So with all of them in place, let's have a quick look what we have to play with. There's the text, we have the fish and the fins and the eye that we can move independently. So the back fin, the big side fin, the eye. The heart shapes and the bubbles, they all rise to the surface Let's just have a quick look at them. I created the mask there to have them fade out. The mask is assigned to the group. Just the mask in the layer panel. And then I use the fill tool and go from the bottom as fully visible to transparent at the top. I assigned the mask to the group, that way I can move the content and not worry about their individual transparencies. I turned the background off to be able to see through my animation layers, that way I can see the fish or the bubbles below when I'm working on a frame above.
with all my content inside the artboard. I just need to duplicate the artboard. Now I didn't think about the visibility, so I am gonna put a copy of the background below my artboards just to see the white text. I set the opacity of the first artboard to 50%, keeping the artboard on top at 100%, so that way I can see the difference of the two artboards. This effect is called onion skinning in animation, so you layer up multiple pages and still can see through and know where your animation came from and where it's going to. Now I can make changes to my second artboard, I scale the text up a little bit, I move the fish up and squash the fins. I move the eye just a little bit with the hearts and the bubbles. The idea is to morph them into each other so the bottom bubble moves into the position of the higher one. The heart goes from the big one to the small one. The big bubble goes from big to slightly smaller and then fading off at the top. Within the four frames I want to move them all the way from one stage to the other. So I move, scale and rotate. Once I'm done with this frame, I duplicate the artboard again and start all over again, moving, scaling, rotating, skewing the parts that I want in motion. For the fourth frame, it wouldn't make sense to duplicate the artboard number three because we need it to match up with the first one. So it needs to be a step away from number one. So it's easier to duplicate artboard number two and just make the modifications to the bubbles and the hearts to match up. And the rest will be looping back to frame one. With all four frames down, I turn the background back on and we have a wee bit of an animation here. It's just four frames. You can add a lot more. You can add more details. You can avoid the mistakes I made in here. There's a few things that definitely need tweaking. One thing to keep in mind when doing animated GIFs is the limitations within the color format of the GIF. It just has 256 colors for the file. So too many colors, too many gradients will cause problems and lead to a loss in quality once you convert your PNGs to GIF files. Before I can put this into the GIF maker, I need to export those four frames to PNG. I go to the export persona for that, seeing we have different artboards the export persona considers every artboard a separate layer to export. 
I switch to slices and see the files that get exported and the format that get exported in, which is a single PNG, which is what I want. So all I need to do now is export slices and it will select the folder I want to export to. I click on export and I have four PNG files in my folder. Seeing Affinity Designer doesn't yet have a GIF animation exporter, these four PNG files can be imported into a GIF maker. I chose easygif.com. I take my four files, drag them into the field in the site. It uploads them as soon as I click on upload and make a GIF. takes a little while and voila I have my four frames I can set the delay time I'll leave everything as it is for now it tells me that there is a problem with the size probably the export had an issue I didn't check the file sizes if that happens make sure you check your sizes for the export in this case it looks okay my preview looks all right I now have the options to crop work on it at the speed but all I want to do is save, which will trigger a download. So I have the file on my computer to do with as I please. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment below. Let me know what you want to see on my blog or on this channel. And I'll see you again soon.